Well, hello, as this loads up, this is Kevin Kyler with Environmental Inspection Dynamics. Um, as you can see, this is a short introduction video presented by us, EID. And you're probably here because you suspect you may have SIRS, which you're going to find out exactly what that all stands for in the next slide. But I have to read you this. This is for medical information only. We are not medical practitioners, nor are we giving medical advice here, period? Please understand that. All right. all right. So what is this series all about? Well, it actually stands for Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. So let's go through this. Uh, chronic is when the course of the disease lasts more than three months. Inflammatory is the body's attempt at self-protection. If you didn't have something inflaming in your body, it would be sending to your mind, it you get very sick all the time and die. So you need that. It's a response. The response is relating to or being a relax reaction to a stimulus. And that stimulus could be something bad that involves SIRS. Okay. The syndrome is a set of signs and symptoms that appear together and characterize a disease or medical condition. Ah, very important. It is an illness that will not correct itself. It's not a cold. It won't go away in a few weeks. So regarding this series, there's a quote from Dr. Richie Schumacher. This is an illness. It's not an allergy. It is an inflammation within the body, which is caused by an immune system that's gone haywire. He continues, it is an illness that is caused by water damage buildings, and it's been called mold illness, biotoxin illness, and Dr. Richie Schumacher has given it that acronym SIRS. Um, where we come in is about the water damaged buildings, as you will see. Now, everybody thinks, oh, black toxic mold. Does that look black to you? No, but it is the most toxic form, a species that is of aspergillus. Aspergillus probably has four or 500 species, but you don't want to be around this one. So the who and how SIRS affects people. It affects only 24% of the world's population that are genetically predisposed to SIRS. In these people, there are genes that they have been isolated uh, that keep the person's immune system from, from functioning properly. Here's the important part. Get this. SIRS is both multi-system and multi-symptom. Your body has many systems and it makes these symptoms go Berserk, let's put it that way. It affects those that reside in what? Water damaged buildings. That's where we come in. Um, trust in this. It is an illness, not an allergy. If it sticks around all year, perennial, you got something worse. So the who and how and Sears affects people. Biotoxins will not clear out of a person's system. In other words, very simply, you and I, normal people, hopefully you're okay, uh, will eat something with some toxins or inhale it. We poop it out. It's that simple. But SIRS needs a condition to prime the pump. This can be high stress, autoimmune activity, et cetera, and a lot of others. Now, what are some of those? Okay, those chronic indicators can be fatigue, memory problems, headache, nausea, chronic fatigue syndrome, or just general malaise. You don't know what's bothering you, okay? Worsening of those multi-symptoms and a, a misdiagnosis of the above. This is important. Folks, not all your primary care physicians understand this. You've got to go out and seek the ones that do know about SIRS. All right, first thing up. If you suspect that you've got this, this is one of the first tests that they recommend. It's called a visual contrast sensitivity test. Hey, they would give these to veterans, you know, post-war traumatic syndrome. And guess what? Copy this down at the bottom. It's free. The basic one that is, is free. And you can go to that um, vcstest.com. Um, they can help you out from there. There's other places that will do it too. Now, another thing I want to point out, laboratory testing. Um, when I do work with clients and they have, you know, a child that may have this, 
Um, we talk about getting them the right test and you go to Great Plains Laboratory. Now they are known as Mosaic Diagnostics. There's their uh, link to go there. Um, that bottom that says they do tests like the OAT, which stands for Organic Acids Test. I can share that with you from my knowledge and learning of this. Um, that's one of the first tests that they would recommend. Okay. Now, the test is called ERMI. Uh, the tests were determining the extent of biotoxic contamination in homes. <clears throat> Excuse me, ERMI stands for Environmental Relative Moldiness Index and was developed by the EPA. Um, it was developed by two very distinguished gentlemen, Dr. Ki Tae Lin with Micrometrics and Stephen Vesper. These guys are very smart. They patented this with the EPA. It is a screening tool to evaluate potential risk of indoor mold growth in homes. Mold is ubiquitous and accumulates in homes over time. It is found in, heat, this is important, accumulated dust. Now, the analysis is done through, this is a mouthful, mold-specific quantitative polymerase chain reaction. Gee, where have you heard PCR from COVID? All right. <laughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> Here's how that works. It looks at the mold's DNA. That's what PCR does for both good molds and bad molds. And we'll show you that. Here it comes. All right. You know, I'm going to grab my pointer out here so I can differentiate what's going on. By the way, we don't do this way anymore. The old VAC test. And that's the stuff you use on that doodad. Pay attention to this stuff. All right. When you do, um, you know, submit the samples for, for an ERMI test, this is what you get back. Uh, hopefully some of the, not all places will give you a nice color graph like this because that helps you understand. In basics is what this means is you subtract this sum from that sum. And if you wind up blasting past five, as you can see in red, you have a problem. Now, I would say if you're thinking you've got this, on my website is the expanded of this you know, the information about serves. Go there, please. All right, let's get to this part. Um, this is the new way. And by the way, you have to have gloves on. I just did this because I was presenting it for, you know, the website. You use non-scented Swiffers. This is what you do. That's how you got to acquire about five grams of dust and it must properly be reverse folded, packed properly and labeled. You don't just send the stuff in a baggie to the, to the lab. And by the way, you got to fill out a COC, chain of custody document, or they won't accept it. Now, look at look at this with me. All right, there. Hey, Kev's got a glove because this is an actual job I did way back 2017. Do you dust on top of your paddle fan? Do you dust on top of your kitchen cabinets? What about closet things in there? What about the stuff behind your TV that's hung on a wall and stuff behind your computer? That's where you have to take it from. Now, <laughs> here's the problem with doing the army. Let's read that. The army test does not tell you what specific area has the mold problem. If you have a two-story, you did the top floor, you did the middle floor, and you did the basement, you send it in, and it comes back, oh boy, we got a high, you know, we got a high ERMI result came back. It doesn't specifically tell you what room and what wall and what area that it came from, okay? Understand that there are other tests we use that are less money to help differentiate that. Now, this is the important part. I'm talking about us here at Environmental Inspection Dynamics. What goes along when we do ERMI test sampling? Look at this. Um, pull out the pointer again. We use a bunch of different instruments. Very important stuff. This, isn't, this is not all of them. We start on the outside of your house and look for what's called cause and effect relationships to the inside. This takes roughly two plus hours for us to do this. This is important in the aspect that, hey, we're trying to narrow down where the problem could be occurring. You got to have moisture to make molds. So if you do, we got to find that out. All right. All right. Now let's close with this. Let me read these down. If you suspect something is making you ill, something in your home or workplace isn't right, your primary doctor can't figure it out. You're getting frustrated and depressed then you may have, underline, may have SERS, 
if you're genetically disposed, of course. So you owe it to yourself and, of course, your loved ones to check into the possibility that it may be Sears. Now, we can help you with the residential workplace side of this by doing those tests that I showed you in a very abbreviated form. But again, if you suspect you have a problem, you need to seek professional medical advice. Um, again, this is Kevin Kyler at Environmental Inspection Dynamics. You can reach me at that number. I'm glad to answer as many questions as I can. Until that time, folks, stay safe, stay well. Thank you.